Okay, so we are just going to go over any questions you want me to go over. What one do you want? Four. What is the volume of object A? So you come up to object A and you should have the magic triangle. I highly recommend just having the magic triangle on a test like this. The magic triangle tells us that B equals M over D. Oh, that's not question four. Never mind. I'll keep going with this though. V equals M over D. So this is actually question three, my mistake, sorry. So mass of eight, we already knew the density. The density was two, right? Yep, so then eight divided by two equals four. So that would have been this answer. And again, how did I know the density was four? Because they were made of the same material. So whatever the density of any of them were, they were the same. So that was question three. Let's try question four. So it says a sample having a volume of one cubic centimeter was cut from each object. So every cube that they cut out of each object was one, centime uh, one centimeters cubed. Uh, what is an accurate statement about the sample? So I actually have a question before we do that. If they cut out a sample that was one centimeters cubed, what was the density? So how do you know the density is two? Because density stays the same. So they cut out a piece from this one that was one cubic centimeter and one there and one there and one there. So they cut out something that had the same volume, one cubic centimeter from each piece. It already has the same density. Will they also have the same mass then? So I'm just going through the answers. <laughs> If they have the same volume and the same density, they have to have the same mass. Mass divided by volume equals density. So if we know the dense, the volume is one, mass density equals two, we have to know what the mass is for all of them. That was a tricky question. Um, can I ask which one you answered? C. Uh, each sample is the same shape. Yeah. It, well, it did make sense because they could have, and they probably did cut a cube out of each one, but they didn't have to. Like, I was eliminating them, but then like, I eliminated all of them. Yeah. Oh, wow. The, and that makes sense. This, I do think this was my trickiest question that I put on the test. And it is, I'll tell you guys this right now. I've been teaching earth science. This is my 14th year teaching earth science. I have never had a student get a 100 on the Regents, ever. Mr. Miga has been teaching for a lot longer than me. He's had two, but they were honors eighth grade students. So they're a whole different group of kids. Um, but still in like 20 something years, he's only had two. So this is the reason right there is questions that you really understand the concept. You got everything else right. But this one just throws you because of the wording. And it was truly a reading earth science question there. So that is how they mess with you. So sorry about that. Any others? Yeah. 15. 15, so this was like how I kind of tested your hands-on knowledge without giving you anything to test with your hands but it was asking you for the volume. Remember volume equals length times width times height. And since it's a cube, what do you know about, and it even said this, the cube shown has the same length. So each side of the cube has the same length as measured. So when you measure this, this would have been, it looks like 2.2 times 2.2 times 2.2. And when you plug that into your calculator, 2.2 times 2.2 times 2.2, you get 10.6. So mine, mine came out to 10.648, which rounds to 10.6. Did you add by any chance? Did you get, if you got B, you added. Very common. That's how, I, I mean, very common. You're not the only one. Logan. 
<laughs> Anybody else want me to go over any? None? Everybody we just wanted a question for because like 10 of you woken up. Do I have to take it away from you? Yeah, that, that's what, yeah. It's so in case you weren't sure why I was calling on you, it's because you're driving me crazy with the highlighter. <laughs> Anybody else want me to go over any? Really, you guys ace the rest of it? Okay. You do know why. Can you tell me what one you got wrong and why? Just I like to get into the heads of my students. Okay, which one did you get wrong? Question two. Yeah, question two threw way more people than it should have. So again, they all have the same density. They all had a density of two. Two, a density of two is greater than water. So they should have all been at the bottom. Whole bunch of people picked A. Did you pick A? Yeah. At least you knew they were all the same, which these two were the only two that were all the same, but a density of two would make them sink. So you had the good wrong answer, Wyatt. Anybody else? Okay, so test corrections for me. I do them slightly different than other teachers. Um, let me see if I have a form or if I'm just gonna do it on scratch I must, I'll get the form later, but for you guys, it can just be um, scrap paper or a random sheet of paper. What I have you do is I have you write out the, question. Well, I'll just have you go explain your answer. So for example, why is that question two wrong? Um, question two, um, he said they floated. Now they should, he knows that they should sink. So he would write on a separate sheet of paper. Question two, all objects have same density, all should sink. So that shows you know why you got it wrong. So that you're gonna write out the question. Here's, and that's normal. That's what you expect from most of your teachers. Here's where I do things that are slightly different. I then make you take a similar but different test. And that to me will prove one, you still knew all of the things you got right. And two, you learned from your mistakes and you did better. I will, however, if you do all of that work, write out the questions, explain why you got it wrong and retake the test, I will guarantee you 10, uh, 10 points higher than you actually earned. So if you got a 65 and you do all that work, guaranteed 75. If you do all that work, and you really learned from your mistakes and you got a hundred, I put the hundred in the grade book. So it's a guaranteed 10 points higher or whatever you actually earn, whichever is better. I will not give you higher than a hundred though, sorry. Um, so it is a little bit of extra work, but it is worthwhile. You at least get 10 points higher. You might even get a hundred. Um, that will be due one week from today. So I always give you a week to do that. So that does include arranging a time to retake the test. No, you cannot retake the test during class. It either has to be during a study hall, which I know a lot of you don't have study halls. You can come down during your lunch. We'll figure it out. Or after school or even before school, because I know a lot of you get here and you're wandering around the building for 15 minutes. You're welcome to come here for 15 minutes tomorrow, 15 minutes the next day, 15 minutes the next day until you get it done, however long it would take. So it is worthwhile. It will take a little bit of your time, but that is worth the extra points on the test then. Does that make sense or does anyone have any questions about that? Okay, so I will get a form out if you would prefer to do this on a form, but like I said, you can just do it on a blank sheet of paper and write out the questions. All right, well, that being said, your homework was page three and four of the packet. 
And I just realized I didn't make an answer sheet, so we'll make one as we go. We did do questions one and two together using the reference table. The most abundant, again, make sure you know what the word abundant means, um, is hydrogen. And the abbreviation for calcium is CA. In the Earth's crust, what is the percent of magnesium by volume? So again, just make sure you do crust by volume. Magnesium is 0.33. If you put 0.23, that is by mass. So just make sure that you are um, doing what the question asks. They are organized in the crust by mass and volume. Name the element that can be found in all three of them. And the only element that's in all three is oxygen. <coughs> A percent of iron by volume in the crust should be 0.49%. And what is the percent of aluminum in the crust by mass? That's 8.23. What is the per, oh wait, I skipped, sorry. That's 8.23. What is the most abundant element for question seven in the troposphere? That's gonna be nitrogen. You can either write it out or put the symbol, it doesn't matter. Um, name the two most abundant elements in the crust by mass. And that is gonna be oxygen and silicon. And by the way, no, it's not silicone, it's silicon. Silicone is made out of silicon. Name the two most abundant elements in the crust by volume. And that will be again, oxygen. And looks like potassium. Yep. Again, either one. Oops, I didn't realize they did want the percents here. So for oxygen by volume, 94.04, potassium 1.42. Up here, oxygen was 46.10 and silicon was 28.20. And uh, the hydrosphere two elements include their percent. We have um, hydrogen and that's at 66% and oxygen at 33%. Um, put them in order from least to most dense. Remember how I kind of started to explain this yesterday. Hydrosphere is water, atmosphere is air, lithosphere is rocks. And if you think about it, it has air, water, and rocks, air is the least dense, water is in between, and rocks will sink, no, you should not write your answers like that. You should actually write them out as atmosphere. Hydrosphere. And lithosphere, knock it off you two. And what is the percentage of calcium by mass for the next one, 4.15? Which but when comparing the percent by mass and the percent by volume in the Earth's crust, which element has a lower percent by mass? Um, that would be oxygen. Its percent mass is lower than its percent by volume. I name the only element found in the crust that has a higher percent volume than by mass. Just go down the list real quick. Um, higher percent, the oxygen again. Okay. What is the percent by mass of aluminum, iron, and calcium combined? Did anybody do that one? Is that what everybody got? Yeah. 1801? That's what I meant. And how about which two elements listed in the chart are not found in Earth's crust? That's only nitrogen and hydrogen are the only two elements not found in the crust. 
And did you guys add up oxygen and silicon by mass? What is it? I said I heard the nine three. 50, what is it? 90. All right, so we've got by mass, oxygen is four. Wow, 46.10 and 28.20, 74.3. Everybody get that? Okay, that's definitely not it because oxygen's more than like that are off the bat. And then by volume, 94 point, whoop. <coughs> no. Oh, sorry, 94.04 plus <coughs> All right. There is greater volume of calcium in Earth's crust than there is sodium by mass. Oh, true, true. <coughs> by volume of calcium and sodium by mass, there is greater calcium by volume but than sodium by mass. That's definitely false. So volume of calcium, in case you're still confused, would have been 1.18. <coughs> sodium by mass, 2.36. So that is, there's not greater volume by mass. In the hydrosphere, hydrogen is the most abundant element. <coughs> oh, geez. Did you read the questions? Did you use your reference table? Okay. Yeah, uh, you definitely have to read the questions and use your reference table. Um, not gonna lie, I don't know this stuff off the top of my head. Why would I? It's a waste of brain space. Use your reference table if they give it to you. In the Earth's troposphere, most of the air we breathe is oxygen. That is false, as weird as that seems. It's all nitrogen. It is mostly nitrogen. Holy cow. You don't know how to do trues and falses? So you write true if it's right, and you write false if it's wrong. Okay. okay. <laughs> there is more silicon in the crust by mass. False. So silicon false. in the crust by mass is, just going to double check this, 28.2. And by mass, uh, by oxygen, by volume, 94.04. <coughs> okay. That is wrong. You're right. That is false. No, <laughs> sorry. The statement is incorrect, which makes it false. Potassium is the only element found in the crust. False. That is false. No, I got false. Okay, good, good, good. In the Earth's crust by mass, there is more magnesium false. than false. sodium. False. So magnesium, again, gonna, not that I don't trust you guys. 2.33 and sodium, oh, 2.36. That is false. They were close. <laughs> All right, does anybody have any questions on those? No. <laughs> All right, we are running out of time. When have you guys heard about a coordinate system? No, coordinate plane. Coordinate plane. What the heck is that? When, it, yeah. Okay, so it is latitude and longitude, but what other class do you do coordinate stuff? Math. math. And what do you do with coordinates in math? You plot points. Graphing is using an X, Y coordinate. Latitude and longitude is almost exactly the same, except for instead of using X and Y, we use latitude and longitude. <coughs> oh my gosh. It's not COVID. And again, of course, I didn't have the right one open. <coughs> oh. Here is what goes on the bottom of page four. 
A coordinate system is a grid where each location is defined by the intersection of two lines. The coordinate system used on Earth is latitude and longitude. I'm going to go get some water so I stop coughing. So latitude and longitude is nothing more than graph paper put over the globe. Is that actually water? It is actually water. Yeah, it's actually water. All right, everybody got that? What we're going to do then is flip your packet over to page five, which you'll notice is a reading. Page six, you will notice is a reading. I would like to go to page seven right now. On page seven, you will see a nice compare and contrast chart for latitude and longitude. We are going to fill this out from the reading. So as I've said before, I don't give you a textbook. Sometimes though, I take pages out of a textbook and put them in here if I think they're that important. So what we're going to be looking for for each one, latitude and then longitude, where is zero degrees? I'm looking for an actual name for each. No, oh, no, no, you're going to get this from the reading. One answer is the prime meridian. Uh, no, no. Okay, no, no, guys, we're not moving. Hang on, you're going to work with me here. So you're giving me an actual name. The lines are called, so all of the lines of latitude and the lines of longitude have a real name, not lines of latitude, not lines of longitude. Um, no, again, if you guys can't follow directions, I'm gonna start getting annoyed. Lot, do you wanna make a count? Okay. Lines run, it means which way do they go? The appearance is already drawn here for you. You don't have to draw them. They're measured in degrees what? And then the highest degree. We'll get the miscellaneous together. But right now, I would like, um, what I'm gonna do is have Logan's um, row. You guys are gonna do latitude. You guys, so Wyatt's row, you're gonna do longitude. Latitude, longitude, latitude, longitude. Okay, so I'm not asking you to do a lot of work right now. Asking you to do one, two, three, four, five, six, technically only five answers from the reading. So that is why I gave you a highlighter. Don't write on this page yet. Just go highlight the answers. Remember, when I say follow my directions, it's for a reason. So you're just going to go highlight those answers in the reading. You're not writing them down yet. Latitude for Logan, longitude for Wyatt, latitude, longitude, latitude, longitude.
Just about done with your side? Not yet? Again, you're not writing your answers, you're just highlighting them. All right, let's start with latitude, which of course was the second page. Latitude, what is the name of zero degrees of latitude? That is the equator. Everyone fill that in. All right, and what are the lines called? You guys used to probably only call them lines of latitude, but they're officially parallels of latitude. No apostrophe, sorry. Parallels. Parallels of latitude. Hey, by the way, why are they called parallels of latitude? They are parallel to each other. Here's what they would look like on a globe. This is looking at the globe from like you're looking at it from the equator. This would be like if you were looking like a drone over the North Pole, that's what they would look like. They are parallel. The lines never touch. Unlike the lines of longitude, they do touch. So they are not called parallels of longitude. <coughs> Which way do the lines run? They do run horizontally. Now, if you said they run east to west, which is true, I don't want you to write that because that messes with your head. I do want you to write horizontal. And if you are unsure what horizontal means, I'm gonna just go ahead and draw three horizontal lines. And that is called horizontal because they are the same as the horizon, which is the line where the uh, land and the sky meet. Like I said, this is what they look like. And what do they measure degrees what? Um, that's the highest degree. In fact, we can skip there. The highest degree is 90 degrees. And by the way, 90 degrees north, what is the name of 90 degrees north? North Pole. That's the North Pole. And what about 90 degrees <coughs> south? South Pole. But what do the degrees measure? They are degrees what? What? No, it's degrees north or degrees south of the equator. So if you are 90 degrees north, you're 90 degrees north of the equator. If you're 90 degrees south, you're 90 degrees south of the equator. All right, did we find the name, James? For longitude, it's prime meridian. And what are these lines called? They are, all the lines are called meridians. So they're all called meridians and the one that's at zero degrees is the prime meridian. These lines run vertical. And that is the up and down lines. They do touch at the North Pole and the South Pole for that matter. So they do kind of look like they, like they bow out a little. These lines measure degrees what? Yep, east or degrees west of the prime meridian. And what was the highest degree? 180 and it had a name. 
It is the international dateline. That is as far as I planned on getting today. We will get to the miscellaneous tomorrow. We'll actually look at a globe tomorrow. And you have no homework unless you want to do test corrections.